Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, so as I am adjusting to this new climate, and it's not a bad adjustment, rather getting reacquainted with this heat and humidity that I missed from living, from growing up along the Gulf Coast. Um, I have to ask y'all, on my last video, there was some feedback. Um, psychological trait of 304s 403s if you like to call them that some like say um, but I didn't get much feedback good or bad just a little bit I want to give a shout out to BGS Ibmore for sharing that one um, my subscriber count went up 16 in a day and the views went up by about 150 in an hour uh, within and then they they trip they doubled um, within the next hour. So I really appreciate that BGS from the bottom of my black heart, and from the depths of my black mind. I don't know. Oh, also what uh, Don Calypso, I think you did too. So shouts out to both of you. Um, so to make a long story short, um, I'm recording this one uh, because of. Uh, somebody being demonetized I don't know if you can actually feel bad about them being demonetized if you're Muslim um, maybe you can't and I'm not one to walk around and try to be a thought police most of the time but it's already inherent in uh, in, in our doctrine that some opinions we're just not allowed to have because then that would negate one's faith um, people may have biases in turn and, and they can admit that it's it's their bias and therefore they're lacking but it doesn't make them uh, bad people but by the same token um people can try to justify their biases and that can make them bad people. Because see, uh, I'll be the first to tell you that we as Muslims are not allowed to side against the oppressed and we're not allowed to side with the oppressors. That's a big no-no. Can't do that. Can't try to justify it. Can't try to uh, halalicize it. You side with the oppressors, uh, you or she's a pit. And that's the end of that. Like, who the heck you think you are siding against the ones that get oppressed and siding with the ones who oppress? Where your humanity at? Let alone your faith. Um, and some people have biases that are based on behavior and based on culture. And those things... Are within people's control so there's a logic to that fresh and fit may have a problem with abba and preach but here's the thing fresh and fit have to admit their biases like the biases that they have against abba and preach um they're just going to have to admit that um, for one Fresh is going to have to admit that he is supposed to have a bias from before because uh, I think it's Abba is an ex-Muslim if I'm not mistaken now I thought he was probably just an East African Christian but if he's an ex-Muslim well that's the bias and that's nothing personal um, but you do have to admit that that's a bias you have to have. If you were a Muslim and you aren't anymore, I'm required to have a particular bias against that, but that's based on a choice. And that's even if I like certain things and we've, we may be friends on Facebook, there is still that division. You are still out of pocket. It's not about what I say. You're still out of pocket with the Lord of the worlds, regardless as to how I feel about you. 
So even if I'm nice and civil, that doesn't mean that on the day uh, when we all wake up that you're off the hook uh, because I or any other Muslim, currently Muslim, was nice to you. Now the rules are the rules. Some of us are gloating and others of us are sympathizing. And I don't even know how bad this is going to be for them. But what I do know is that Fresh is, um, he's been out, he has been out of pocket. He's not newly out of pocket. Fresh has been out of pocket for a long time. When he decided to wear Ku Klux Klan hood and then make monkey noises, when he said that they were really designed to be retard noises, but he then made monkey noises to make a mockery of either Abba or Preach. I don't know which one. In any case, the point is that he decided to do this and make a mockery with a Ku Klux Klan hoodie on. That was wrong. There are people who love to take personal responsibility as a talking point for black folks. And they're not wrong when they're talking about the things that are within our control, but they're wrong when they're talking about the things beyond our control. Um, and they'll sit up and say, well, maybe you had to do twice as much to get the same result, but you should have done it. No, that's where they're wrong. That's the line right there. That right there was wrong. Someone else has to do twice as much to get the same result, let alone lesser of a result then that right there was wrong. You don't start preaching personal accountability because somebody decided to take a shortcut, the same shortcut somebody else took. Or the same thing that wasn't even a shortcut when someone else took it. That's where I have to divorce myself from those that will be Republicans and conservatives. I can agree with them that black America needs a cultural overhaul and still disagree with them when they start talking about, well, forget about white supremacy. It's not about them. And if you just work, you can make it. No, it's not a guarantee. I know. I've worked and not gotten far ahead. I've, I've worked other times and gotten somewhat far ahead. But I can tell you one thing. America's never given me a fair shake. Not at any point. There was no point where this where America corporately or governmentally gave me a, a, a a truly fair shake. Now, governmentally, to a certain extent, it was, well, actually, to a greater extent, there was a lot less of a difference because, you know, the government's got to maintain appearances. But corporate America has not even come close. No. I've actually been treated worse than other black folks have in corporate America because I'm not a corporate Negro. A fair minded, yes. Hard working, yes was hardworking, but I am not a corporate Negro. I don't talk about how much I love a challenge. I don't love challenges. I meet them, but I don't love them. And that's the thing. Corporate Negroes will look at a movie like Fences and say that the speech that the father gave his son about how he ain't got to like him was great and grand. And, and granted, that's technically true, but They'll sit up and say, that's what life is about. It's about duty. It's not about feelings and emotions. And there are times when it is. But then when it comes down to if someone says to them, well, you don't seem to like challenges. They don't have the guts to say to them, I don't. I just meet them because of a sense of duty. I ain't got to like them. Oh, no. See, then they change up. And I know because I've been around them. Morehouse was not chock full of them, but they were loud as a contingent in Morehouse, just like. The men that weren't even interested in women were um, kind of loud, somewhat. The corporate conservative Negro was louder. They were the loudest. They and the preachers were the loudest. See, the different types of Morehouse men and men of Morehouse. Those of you that went to and are going to Morehouse know the distinction between those. But there is a... Uh, a variety even in, in an, um, amongst and between Morehouse men. This is not commonly talked about, but it is there. That distinction does exist. You've got um, the preacher. You have the, the Republican. And I'm not going to call them just Republicans. Um, 
you have the corporate Negro. They may be liberal or conservative, but they're corporate Negroes. Um, you have the ones that are soft mannered, but they're actually straight. You may call them metrosexual. You've got those guys. Um, they're clearly not macho, but they're not interested in other men. Then you've got um, the scholar athlete. And then on top of that, only amongst the freshman year, really, and maybe first semester sophomores, you got the ones that shouldn't have been there. You got the ones who um, are, they're still stuck in high school. They're not outgrowing high school. They're not ready for college and university. They're there on a vacation and they don't realize that that vacation is going to come to an end. And they're still thinking along the lines of high school and they don't make it. They just don't. Instead of making it, um, they stay up late playing dice, hanging out. Um, they probably even get a job and they wind up, sometimes they wind up dropping out or flunking out. But usually, um, usually they flunk out. The better ones amongst them get jobs because it's Atlanta and they settle in and they just start working and, they, and they're not interested in studying anymore. They're those. But these, the, the, these are the different types. Getting back to the issue of a particular um, contingent being demonetized. I want to state this. The features is right when he says that the red pill is vast. As a movement, it's going to die out. Or as a fad, I should say, or as a trend, it will. But as a life, a way to live or as a set of decisions that are based on the environment, it is not. It is going to become something that you do not throw up um, and uh, about which you do not gang bang. It is going to become one of those things. It is going to be become one of those things that you, you simply do. You understand and you do. It will be an understanding and a set of decisions. It will not be a discussed sector, per se, on social media. Not nearly to the extent that it is now. And it is very true. What the features has been saying, you got people that are in this for a grift. And that's part of the reason why I monetize. I thought about it and figured I'm not even going to chase down the YouTube money for now. Because YouTube fights this thing um, a myriad of ways that lets me know that they're actually somebody in somebody at YouTube is probably a government liaison. And there are in governments, there are liaisons with particular forces that we can't see. That have always had free will and that have chosen wrong. And they hate our species. They hate human beings regardless of race. They just hate black folks more. And they hate black men the most because, well, we remind them the most of Adam, alayhi salam. But I'm going to tell you this about um, the grift so to speak. YouTube fights this thing in a way, uh, a myriad of ways with different creators. Some of them, they don't let them get big. Others of them, they let get big like these two and then pull the plug on them in an attempt to embarrass those that are red pill aware. And when you look at this, 
fresh and fit, a very red pill aware when it comes to what's going on between the genders. But when it comes down to what's going on with race, then they don't get it. And this shows those who are monitoring accounts, big accounts at YouTube, this shows them that there's a, a bit of IQ lacking. It's gone. The IQ that they should have, they don't. Neither of them. And I say that they should have because they're not born stupid. Fresh managed to become a government agent, so he can't have a low IQ, but he lets certain things just go over his head because of what, what's not brought to him. Fresh didn't grow up around black Americans and he didn't grow up around um, Sudanese. He grew up around white folk and he thinks that their worldview was right. And that's why he can see when it comes to gender, but can't see when it comes to race. That's the reason why. Despite the fact that the reason his parents left Sudan for the United States was for better opportunities, which were no longer in Sudan, specifically because of what the British did. And why the British did it was because of white supremacy. Why did they colonize in the first place? And why do they feel comfortable doing it? Well, people have always conquered, but they felt comfortable doing this on the basis of which they did it because of white supremacy. That's why they stopped colonizing each other and turned outward. Took them a while to learn how to do it. It took them two world wars to learn how to stop fighting with each other. But they did make that one of their goals and they stuck to it. And that is the reason why the British did what they did to his country. And his parents left and had to go elsewhere for better opportunities and wound up in a cousin of the colonizer. And he grew up with the colonizer's grandkids and he thinks that they're right. If I was fit, I'd be pissed. But fit, to be honest, you did follow Fresh for a while. And yes, I'm saying you followed him. For all I would have been, unless you're doing the behind the scenes work, you've been following him because he does all the talking for whatever that's worth. I'm going to point out as well, uh, because I have to, because someone's got to, that... Um, When it comes down to it, they're going to do this to others. Now, right now, they started where they had the most ammo, and that's fresh and fit. These guys gave them ammo because they do say racist stuff. And frankly, white conservatism is racist. It's not racist when a white person happens to be morally conservative, but their political conservative talking points are. That's what they're made. That's what they're there for. With that being said, in any case, and I don't expect them to agree with me about that, but that's the truth. However, with that being said, I'm going to point this out. They gave YouTube the ammo by saying the dumb stuff they said. When they sat up and they gave YouTube this ammo, YouTube is now going to turn around and go after others with more ease and convenience because it will be more it will because it will be easier and more convenient. <laughs> they will simply go after them. And they will have a field day with these guys. And they will say and they will state, listen, you know what? Um, you are on the same thing that Fresh and Fit was on, even though racially I'm on something completely different and religiously too. Even though the features is, he's not the only one, even though BGS is, even though many of us are on something completely and vastly different because we ain't sitting up here trashing and bashing black folks as a whole. We are bashing specifically Boon Shika, Bon Quisha, Sophista Ratchet Sapphire. We are bashing them because of the choices they make. Um... And we're only talking about their personal responsibility and accountability over that 
or, or for that over which they had control from the beginning. We are different from them, but YouTube is going to come along and because of the gender stance and because we don't find blindness, they're going to come and say, okay, we have this precedent already established. We did this to them. We're now going to do this to you. And they're going to turn around and demonetize as much as possible. They're not demonetizing them because of their racial views. They're demonetizing them because of their understanding of gender. And then want to do the same thing to us. And that's part of the reason why I would rather be at the mercy of your support through Cash App than to chase down AdSense for Google, which is a hard thing to do anyway, because they can't mail it to an, an address that easily. Not here. You see where this is going? So in any case, that's what's next. And while I don't sympathize with them, at all and i think that it, it's time for fresh uh to be out there doing working regular jobs if he can get them with his face and for fit to have to struggle well i think that's what they need to have to do so that they can understand uh what opportunities are not out there for straight brothers and and how much it doesn't matter that they're uh not ados or fba I, 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 while that is the case i do still understand that this may have been a right decision made for the wrong reasons and those wrong reasons will then be used to make the same decisions for the rest of us. So before I could ever be called to give a long explanation for why I decided what I decided, here's the example, fresh and fit. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for listening and as always, uh, well, Due to those around, I won't go through the whole outro because uh, I'm near my office. But um, you know what it is. And for those of you who have come to One Cash App and you know who you are, but I'm going to say your names anyway. I thank you and appreciate you from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. And I'll go ahead and say those names before I sign out. Thank you to Joe Schmo, Red Falls Black, S. Jock, Twice, Charles Curry. V. Brandon Dickerson, Brother Campbell, you know who you are, Aslam Lakin, brother, Mojo, did I mention Senor Coleman, MLR as always, and John Bell. Thank you for flying on this Jet Black Airways flight with us, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with us till the wings and the wheels fall off. As always, gender, justice, forever. <laughs>